What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be making a video regarding body work. So right here, as you can see, I just got done bumping out a little dent on the quarter panel of my father's expedition here. And now that the body work's done, we're going to want to prime it. A lot of people when they're getting into this, myself included, will use these Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 or any spray can primer. And what you're going to want to do with these is actually throw them right in the garbage if you want it to actually look good and you want it to last. And that's because this primer here, this being Shopline JP202 in particular, that sprays out of the gun is not only a lot thicker, where it's actually going to fill imperfections unlike the aerosol can, which isn't actually really going to fill anything because it's all solvent. In this instance, I went ahead and first started sanding this filler using 80 grit sandpaper, went over it with 180, 320, and then 400, the whole area. And I used a scotch right pad on any shiny edges. But as you could see, I did go through with a razor blade and fill those pinholes for the most part. But sometimes you'll miss them. And also you'll see right here, even though it's you can't feel it anymore and it's feathered out, if you paint over that with a rattle can, you're still gonna see these scratches. So you wanna use a high build primer to make sure it covers all that shit. In addition to that, the big thing is, is this aerosol here. You take a test panel, spray some of this on a spot, and then take another panel and spray some of that on. And the next day, come at it and start wiping it with thinner. This stuff here will put up a really good fight trying to clean it off while the aerosol will wipe right off. And while what's in paint, well, paint thinner, so it sprays through the gun. So when you go to base coat over that rattle can stuff, it'll tend to want to wrinkle up. So this hardener here really locks down that primer and makes a good bond between your body filler slash bare metal and your paint. So that's why I like using this and I'm gonna be spraying it today using a Harbor Freight paint gun. In addition to that, a Harbor Freight, I picked up some of these disposable cups which kind of replicate PPS's system where it's disposable. So I don't even actually use the cup that comes with it. You can, it's just it makes it a huge extra pain in the ass to clean. Where with one of these and you get done, instead of scrubbing a cup all day, you just take it, throw it in the trash, and then take your uh, gun bottle cleaner and just spray fluid right through the top with the trigger wide open. And it'll get the gun cleaned out in about two seconds. Use half as much thinner in time. And with that, I had to pick up this little adapter they got, which looks like a PPS 1.0. I'm surprised they haven't done the 2.0 system because that's honestly been out for as long as I've known about anything painting related. That you got your brushes, I guess, to clean it out. And this little screen here to keep the tip from plugging up with debris is actually pretty much needed in my opinion if you're using this. But when you're using this system here, the lid has a built-in strainer already so you don't have to have that dumb thing down in there while you're painting. I've actually used these guns to do base and clear multiple times and I didn't have the money yet for a nice paint gun and I was just getting into it. But I went and picked this one up recently just for primer because why gum up a nice gun or use anything more expensive than you have to if you're just gonna have to sand the primer anyway. As long as you could get the primer on the surface, you're pretty much golden. A lot of guys, even in the real collision shops, believe it or not, will put primer on with a roller because you gotta sand it smooth anyway. I wouldn't wanna do that because you're gonna be sanding all day long. But a nice $15 paint gun, which you could get these on sale for nine bucks all the time is gonna be perfectly good enough. So if we go here, these cups actually have some stuff on here. There's four to one to one. So if we're just gonna mix up one part, which is what I'm planning on, we'd go to that first line right there. And then that second line, and that'll be a four to one mix. I should also mention that you're gonna wanna mix this up pretty good before you actually throw it in there so i like to throw it on the paint shaker i just picked this up from painter supply yesterday and it was shaking if it's been sitting forever you're definitely gonna want to either get access to a paint shaker but try to shake it crazy yourself or stir the stir the crap out of it you could mix this up with the stir stick if you actually have a paint shaker this set from Harbor Freight comes with a whole bunch of these plugs that you put in it to shake it up. Just if you're mixing anything with hardener. One second, let me finish stirring this. 
If you're gonna be shaking up anything with hardener in it, make sure you take your finger to the bottom and push all the excess air out before you put the plug in, otherwise it'll blow up in your face. A co coworker told me that. So thankfully I didn't have to learn from personal experience. But now we'll take our lid with the strainer in it here, pop it on, and then it comes with this to lock it in. And now as for my Harbor Freight gun, I'm gonna be throwing on this adapter. You don't necessarily have to, but I recommend it to make it way easier to clean. And then I'm just gonna get on here with an adjustable wrench and just give it a little extra, nothing too crazy. And now as for my gun settings, I'm gonna open this all the way up and then back it about a quarter turn back or closer to a half turn back. And then our air or our nozzle up here, I'm just gonna back that back quite a ways so it's about to come out. So it's almost all the way open and then slide this here to lock it in place. And our air, I'll have to set up with it hooked up. I'll go off of feel, you can get a gauge if you want, but I just go off of the sound. And then when I, whenever I get a new gun, especially from Harbor Freight, they oil the shit out of these so they don't rust and transport on the slow boat. So I'm just gonna go over somewhere to collect this with my bottle cleaner, hold the trigger wide open and just run some thinner through here to ensure that there's no oils in there because that's gonna really affect the adhesion of our primer. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this on and twist it. And it appears we got nothing leaking, so we're good to go. All right, in a second, I'm gonna try to set you guys up on this pool ladder. I'm gonna be wearing a respirator. I highly recommend you do the same. This stuff is horrible for you to breathe in, but I'm basically gonna go and make sure I cover up anywhere where the scratches our body work is, probably about to here. And I'll show you guys what it sounds like when I'm setting it up too, if you're curious about the air pressure. And at the beginning, you might see me hold the gun upside down, hitting the trigger to try to get some of the air out of the bag, which you technically don't have to on a job like this, but if you're gonna be painting upside down, you don't want air coming through. So I try to purge it out, but you don't have to do that stuff for the most part, especially on the primer. You can also get these little water traps from Harbor Freight, which isn't really the most glamorous thing in the world. You should probably use Teflon tape for putting this on, but I'm not going to. And it does kind of catch the water. Sometimes I don't have a dryer or anything. I just have a basic air compressor. So usually when I take the line off, a little bit of water will shoot out. So it's doing something. I wouldn't trust it for a high-end paint job. I get a real dryer, but if you're just looking to do this on a budget, it'll work fine. So I'm gonna throw my mask on now and show you guys what the air pressure is gonna sound like. As you can see, we don't get that much prime in there. It's just a little spot and we got the air out of the bag. So let's lay this on. Yeah, for some reason at first, I was thinking that uh, that gun wasn't gonna dial in. I guess like it's the last like 1% of adjustment is where it goes from zero air at all to full air. It's just super sensitive, but for a cheap gun, I can't really complain. So I'm going to let this sit for a minute until the shine is gone. And maybe after three minutes, I'll show you guys the real trick of the trade. If you're trying to get the sun fast, depending on the job, it'll vary. But usually I like to do three coats of primer on a, average job unless it's i know it's really messed up i'll maybe go a little more but usually three is what i'm doing and the trick is now that you can see it's not that shiny more if you do this right away you're probably just going to blow it around and put runs in it and you want to tread kind of lightly but if you blow it with air you could speed it up between coats i do this a lot where you just want to go like that you don't want to be just all the way but just a little bit of air you could speed up that drying time by quite a bit just flash it between coats. All right, now I'll see if I can smack another coat on real quick, nice and heavy. When 
another thing I like to try to do is hit the trigger all the way usually when I'm going across and then let up so that way there's fluid not coming out but still a little bit of air that way you're not blowing over spray all over the side of the car and once this tacks up I'll give her a third coat all right now I'm gonna hit it with a third coat if you feel like you don't have as much coverage as you want your body works still looking a little rough you could do eight coats if you want it's just going to take you a while and it's going to take longer to dry but usually three to four will suffice the way I clean these, hold the trigger upside down like this, let whatever's in the gun drain back down there. Take it off quickly in case there's any more so it doesn't spill out. I'll just set this to the side for now. But then I'll take an empty container here. This is just an empty thinner bottle. Hold the trigger wide open. Here, let me see if I can adjust the camera better. All right, so I'm gonna just hold the trigger and spray thinner right in the top. Going around to make it sure I get any primer that I see in my little adapter here rinsed out using a empty water bottle cut up as a funnel. You want to make sure you don't spill this stuff. Not good for the environment. I'm not sure exactly how to give a recommendation on where to dispose of this. I guess you're gonna have to do your own research. I work in a body shop, so I'm just gonna take this to work tomorrow and dump it in theirs. But if you're just some random person, I guess I don't really know what to tell you. Right now, it's, it's not even picking up in the camera, but I'm holding it open and I'm spraying the fluid here through the end of the cap. Kind of hard to film, but the way you're going to clean these, you're holding the trigger open. Spray the fluid in through there, which is just thinner is what I used to clean it. Same with up here. Usually I like to start with up there until it's clean and coming out clean. And then I do that once and then go back to doing it from the top. And then you're good to go. Here's my quick take on using a Harbor Freight paint gun. Gave a couple little random tricks, I guess. If you're just starting out, hopefully someone found this helpful. And yeah, don't bother wasting your money on a Devilbus gun if it's just for primer. So hopefully someone found this helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next video.